Hey class, this is Mr. Wells here. In this video, I'm gonna go over the answers to our block diagram problem from our relative aging lab. Now, my recommendation would be to have taken an attempt at this before watching the rest of this video. So you should have an answer for oldest to youngest. Look at the rock outcrop and use our principles that we learned about of, of relative aging. So when we talk about Steno's laws, original horizontality, uh, lateral continuity, superposition, fossil succession, inclusions, and we're gonna be able, you should be able to kind of figure out a rough estimate of the timings. If you got one or two wrong, that's okay. But what I would recommend uh, for you to do is to pause the video, fill this out from oldest to youngest, and then come back and I'm gonna go over the answers. So I'll give you a second to pause the video, try to fill this out on your own, and then we'll go over this. It's gonna be important because if you just listen to the answers, it's not really gonna help you learn it. And we are gonna have other problems in the future. I think those are gonna be really confusing if we don't kind of follow along. Uh, and at least, sometimes it's you learn through, through mistakes. And so if you made some mistakes, that's okay. You'll fix it after you watch this part of the video. And then you'll kind of understand going forward what some of these, these block diagrams could look like. Okay, so I'm assuming that if you, know, you have an answer now uh, as to what you think the timings of the events from oldest to youngest are. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of go over the answers. And so our oldest rock, and this is probably the one that is the most confusing. I know that Mr. Zizi and I used to kind of debate which one was first, which one was second, and these last two layers. I think this is probably the hardest part of the whole block diagram is just this very first one. It turns out that the oldest rock is actually the granite. Now this one might seem to violate one of our, uh, one of our original rules. So I would totally understand if you had slate first, uh, if that was your answer, that would, to me, that would totally make sense, but it does turn out to be the granite. Now you could make an argument. The granite is, is an igneous rock. It looks like it's cutting through the slate. Uh, but here's the really key thing. And it's really hard to see maybe on this video, but when you're looking at your lab, you can kind of zoom it in. You can see chunks of the granite. This is the, these are granite chunks that are included within the slate. Knowing the principle of inclusions, that can tell you, and that'll supersede these, you know, really anything else in this case. If I see chunks of granite inside of the slate, that has to mean that the granite is older than the slate. Those pieces can't exist within the slate without the granite having already been laid down. Now, granite, you don't, you might not know this yet, but granite forms uh, in really large zones. We call them plutons. It is possible to violate the law of original horizontality when it comes to uh, igneous rock. So granite's an igneous rock. It doesn't have to be horizontal. So you know, some people might argue that it's cutting across the slate. Not necessarily the case. The granite is the first one in this case because it's igneous and because you see chunks of it inside of the slate. That means that the next one though is the slate. So if you, if you were close, if you had slate first, and honestly, if you made a good argument as to why you think the slate is the first one, then I would totally accept that. So we have the granite first, and then we have the slate. Then we have the pegmatite. This will be when we use cross-cutting relationships. Pegmatite is just an igneous intrusion, and so we can see the pegmatite cut through the granite easily. It cuts through the slate easily, but it doesn't cut into the sandstone at all. It kind of follows this wavy erosion surface, and actually this erosion surface is called, this would also be known as an unconformity. You have an, uh, a gap in time when you have erosion, which means that you were depositing sediments maybe in a marine environment, the slate is metamorphosed actually, so you might have even had a lot of layers on top of that that have compressed and pressurized that rock uh, below. And then eventually you lost a lot of underlying layers and you've created this erosion surface. Again, I don't. I say don't write the erosion surfaces, so this is not a layer. This is just telling you what's going on geologically. It's another piece of evidence. The pegmatite though cuts through the granite, cuts through the slate, doesn't quite cut through that erosion surface. And so the pegmatite is next. The sandstone would be after that. This is our horizontal deposition, original horizontality. We know that this layer is uh, on the bottom here of the limestone, so this layer has to come first. And then we have our limestone. This is where we use superposition, the, the principle or law of superposition. We know that it's the sandstone and then the limestone. That's traditional marine deposition you would see uh, over the course of time. So we're probably going from a shallow marine environment with sandstone to a deep marine environment. Deep ocean is where you form limestone. And so that's the next one is limestone. Then we would look at the basalt, this basaltic dike. That's another igneous intrusion that cuts through the granite. It cuts through the sandstone. It cuts through the limestone. And then finally, our last two layers, we'd have this volcanic ash. Now this is hard to see. It's actually this little like uh, dashed line across here. 
Now here's the thing too, and it's a little bit tough to see with the Triceratops, but we have volcanic ash and then we have Triceratops fossils right in this area. Um, that that uh, volcanic ash layer is that in this case is actually representing the extinction of the dinosaurs that volcanic ash was created by the meteor impact that, that took out the dinosaurs and so you would you know it's interesting that you'd see a lot of dinosaur fossils and then you see a volcanic ash layer and we see this globally and then you see no dinosaurs on top that's that's one of the context clues for the extinction of the dinosaurs too but the volcanic ash layer is on top of the basalt dike it's on top of the limestone volcanic ash is, is the second to last and then on top of that is this shale and siltstone layer um, and so that would be the timings of the events of this rock. So these should be your answers for the block diagram portion. Now to help you with the last part of the lab where you're, you're trying to use a combination now of relative aging and absolute aging, I'm gonna give you the ages of the igneous intrusions and the igneous layers inside of this rock. And then you're gonna be able to tell me a rough time frame of when these events occurred. So for example, I already highlighted right here the granite, so the, again, these are igneous rocks. We can get the exact ages of just these four layers here. And so the granite, we took that to the lab. We compared the uranium to lead ratios. We figured out that this is 1.7 billion years old. The pegmatite is 1 billion years old. The basalt is 250 million years old. Million, not billion. And the volcanic ash layer, that is an igneous layer. Uh, that would be something we could get the exact age of. We know that that is 65 billion years ago. Like I said, that's the extinction of the dinosaurs. We know that that happened 65 year, million years ago, and that's how we figured that out, was we were able to age the volcanic ash layer. Now, I've given you the four igneous intrusions. We know for sure that these are dates uh, that we can be confident about in the rocks. This is gonna help you get those ranges. So for example, when I ask you about the fossil succession, when I ask you about the bacteria fossils relative age, I don't know how old the fossil is because it's buried inside of a slate. I can't get, that's a metamorphic rock. I can't get the exact age of that. But what I can do is I know that the granite is older, the slate is in the middle, and the pegmatite layer is younger. So for that first answer below, uh, when it's asking about the range of the fossil for the bacterium, I can know for sure that the range is 1.7 billion to 1.0 billion. And you want to write it like that, older to younger. 1.7 billion to 1 billion is the age range of the bacteria. I'm gonna ask you about the other fossils as well too. So see if you can use these exact ages that we know to figure out the timings of the events below. And also, as I've been talking in this video, I've also been mentioning some context clues about the environment. Like for example, the sandstone is deposited in a shallow marine environment. The limestone is uh, developed in a deep marine environment. It's talking about a change of the environment over time. That's, so that's another example of using not just relative aging, but using our context clues to figure out the story of the earth in different periods of time in different locations. And so that should help you with some of the questions uh, below as well. So that was it for the instructions for this video. Hopefully this all makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know while you're in class.